Hello and welcome to a new EasyDigitals.com video tutorial. Remember, you can get all of our high quality Photoshop and Photoshop Elements templates at EasyDigitals.com. Just click on the Products button. And don't forget to sign up for our monthly newsletter. We give away free templates and tutorials each and every month, along with product update info and coupons. Okay, Kim, what easy tutorial are you going to show us today? I want to show you how to customize this poster that's a weathered looking poster that looks like maybe it's been on a wall for quite a while and it's kind of got a grungy dirty look to it. First what we're going to do is we're going to open up our picture that we're going to add to it. So I click open. Let's go over our workspace here. I like to have move tool selected. I like to have auto select layer checked and show transform controls. I also like to have my layers palette open and my history palette open and my character. Uh, the way you open these is you come to window, you put a check in front of the ones that you want to work with. Okay, first let's go over some of our layers here on our poster. If you take a look at the poster, you have a layer called upper lights, and that just adds a more of a um, focused lighting in the upper part, like there's lights shining down on it. I'm going to turn these off as I go over them. Upper lights too, ripples, which kind of makes the paper look like it's rippled. I actually like it on the upper layer because it kind of makes the brick look a little bit weathered, but you could move this layer down and put it underneath the frame and then it would just look like the paper was rippled. We have concrete brick and then we have brick number one which also has a hue saturation. All of the backgrounds have a hue saturation layer and what this does is it allows you to change the saturation until you could actually turn it to complete black and white and it only affects the frame because it's got a clipping mask here this little down arrow is a clipping mask and that's why it only affects the layer that's right underneath it we also have a hue slider which means that you can actually change the color of the brick to anything you want you could have it match maybe a dance picture that had like a purplish theme or blue you can change the lightness and darkness, which I don't really mess with that quite as much. I like the saturation and I like the hue slider. For certain pictures it looks really good and you can turn that off if you decide not to use it. We have a second brick option which has a little bit smaller bricks. We have a wood option which looks great with a lot of different themes. And you can add a hue saturation to that layer as well. The same principles apply. Then we get, have all of our font, all of our different um, fonts that you can use to customize the poster. This is more of a country look with, the, um, with this font here. The on tour, the names. And then we have a dark vignette around the frames, you can see. We have a grunge and then an additional grunge. Sometimes I just like duplicate layers because it makes things more intense. And then we have a full grunge, which I'm going to talk about that in the next tutorial. Basically, we're going to go over how to add grunge, and you could do this with any grunge, even if you're not using this poster. So that's we're going to get a little bit more detailed in that tutorial. And then we have the Your Photo here, and you highlight this one when you drag your photo in. So let's end right here and go ahead and drag our photo in. Also the Your Photo here has a hue saturation layer right above it so that you can actually make the picture look a little bit less saturated, less color in it, which makes it appear a little bit more faded and edgy. Okay, so I'm just sizing this. Basically I'm pressing down my shift key and grabbing my little corner and dragging it up until I get it where I want it. I still have my shift key pressed down and then I'm going to press enter. I'm going to go ahead and scoot this with my right arrow over. I'm going to go ahead and change his name. So basically I grab my type tool. I'm just going to highlight this. Let's go ahead and change the bottom here. And I'm just going to make this, I'm going to grab my move tool and if you grab this little corner when you have these, this diagonal arrow you, and the shift key, then you can just make this bigger and it just basically increases the font size. Apply. And then I'm going to come over to this one and I'm going to change this back to zero and arrow this up a little bit so that you can see, so they're not touching. Shift and pull this out a little bit. You can also change this to say something else if you wanted to put dates on it or you could put anything you wanted there. 
effect, you could change the lighting. You could add lighting to it, the ripples. See if we have our, our dark vignette is on. You could also change it to brick, and I like to add the hue saturation layer. Now, these words, you can also change the color if you have something, if you need a different color. I'm going to change this, turn that off. Say we wanted a blue or something. You can change it to any color. So I wanted to show you how to do that. I'm going to go into my history and undo it. Another thing that you may want to change with this is, with the type, is the blend mode. And let me show you how that's done with the on tour and the name. You may want to change the blend mode. So let me just show you how that's done. Basically you highlight the layer and then you just come up here and you can click on normal and then as long as this as that's highlighted you can just press your down arrow key and watch all the different blending options come through until you find one that you like. If you want to you can just change it back. I like overlay for this particular one but you can change it to anything you want. You can do that on the on tour. You can change the color. You can change the blending mode. I want to show you this. This is important. Um, sometimes when you start moving things around your light will move instead of, well now it's not, your light will move instead of what you want to. So you can lock those in place and then later if you need to move them you can just click unlock as long as it's highlighted. But you can move this, the words around. If you wanted this on the top you could move it up. See that's moving. And you could move this up or wherever you wanted. I'm pressing my shift key and pressing it up to make it move faster. So if you wanted that on the top. I also have another tutorial where I show how to make the head come out over the words. So you might look for that tutorial if you want to do any of that, those techniques. And let's just go down to our picture layer. This is our picture right above it, this hue saturation. And just show you how this, it's a negative 51 right now. If you want it to look exactly like the picture, it would be, you would just turn it off. But this is exactly how the picture is. Then you start to take the color out and you can move it all the way if you want to completely take the saturation out of the picture and back up. On the next video, I'm going to show you how to add grunge around this guitar player and also how to make his picture look a little bit more grungy. So stay tuned. Hey, that was easy. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this tutorial or any of our products, you can always reach us at easydigitals.com. Have a creative day.